Well, you never know where you're going to find a beehive. I tell you, they will make a nest anywhere, won't they, these little girls? We've got some ladies in the blooming boot of a car. Well, that's what the gentleman told me anyway, that the bees were in the boot, but they are in the boot, but they're actually in the fuel tank in the boot. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing, but we're about to find out in a minute. I think this car might be beyond a renovator's delight. I guess we could use the old sun visor. Yeah, if I just pop that there for the moment. Oh. That looks like it's been here for a couple of days. Being that I have no idea what their personality is like, I think I'm gonna go and put my bee suit on. It could be just slightly awkward to deal with them inside of a boot, but still. Oh, actually, we might be able to pull it out. To do that, though, I'm going to go and put my bee suit on too, because girls that live in the Mallee, they've got to be hardy. And they might not be happy to see us. <laughs> yeah. Look, that's the hose, that's what I thought. See that fucking fuel pipe? Put it down there. Yeah. Not let go anyway. <laughs> Help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Help. <laughs> there must be survivors because I mean there hasn't been any water troughs out here for a fair while, so they're pretty hardy. All along here originally, and there's a major nest under here. So I think I'm gonna cut this bit off for a start and just see what we can find. I just get my paint scraper and clean the top off before I start making a mess. We don't want to get them any more dirty than they already will be. We were having an interesting discussion on the way down here when I was telling John that these bees were in a fuel tank and he says, well, I hope there's no fuel in there if you're going to use an angle grinder to cut it open. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, if there's fuel still in here, it'd be a miracle, wouldn't it? I don't know how old this car would be. Is that just going to fall off here, you reckon? Hopefully it does. <laughs> anyway, we've brought ourselves an angle grinder along just in case, but we'll do a bit of digging for a start. a pretty cool spot actually in the boot of the car there they've probably got nice easy access bit of afternoon shade perhaps that's why they did it right because if this was sitting out in the sun they would have just got baked in here this might be a new use for a hive tool ripping a fuel tank open it's truth where, oh, where is the seam oh there's a proper bit there though what's that oh <laughs> Golly, we might have to cut it. It's pretty soft here though. Maybe we won't. <laughs> okay, the girl said, wait a minute, what's going on? There's somebody's letting the light in. Hmm, it's all loose except for this little bit here. It's quite solid there, but maybe if we... See, that's typical. Tip I think we're gonna have to get the grinder and cut through here, I think. I don't think they're happy to see us. What we might do, since they're going to be a little bit aggressive, we might actually wriggle a little bit further away, and then when the field bees come back, they'll just orientate into the boot, and they can just hang around in there and do something by themselves. So I'm just gonna drag it over here a bit further away. Now luckily, the theory is if you, if you have a really angry hive that you're doing and you move it away from where it's actually orientated to, generally speaking, it's the old field bees that do the stinging. So if you can move them away, the field bees will come back and protect the spot where they think they should be and you should be able to work a little bit more easily on the hive that you really are trying to save. Bring me little swarm catching pot or me a cut out pot so as I can put the ladies in here that we don't until we sort out where we're going to put them back together. Hopefully I'll try not to put too much honey in here because otherwise they all get stuck to the bottom. So I just think we'll try lifting up this little piece because it's solid here. So if I can just get started and then we can start lifting back here and find out where the actual storages are, whether there's any honey. Hopefully we'll find some happy brood in here somewhere. What's that? That's another solid bit there. It's more of this fuel tank than meets the eye. <laughs> well, there's a nice bit of honey store there anyway. I don't think there's much on that bit. Oh, that's a bit of old stuff. That's a bit of old wax. Oh, there, look at that. That's the fuel float. <laughs> Is that the bit that used to be the fuel gauge or something? Maybe. Pretty unreal, isn't it? We've still got floats in our fuel tanks even today, so... Oh, I don't know. We haven't progressed a lot, have we? Yeah. What is that hooked to? Is that hooked to anything? 
Come on, why doesn't that want to come? So this is where they started originally. Can't see that they've got any brood there, so that's good. They've got a bit of pollen stored in this one. Now the interesting thing is this, I reckon this must have been here for a day or two because that's pretty old, that's pretty old honeycomb. There are a few dirty footprints across that. <laughs> that's not your plush burr carpet. <laughs> now, Mr. Deco, what are we gonna do? We just pull this off here a little bit at a time, I think, see what we've got. Sort of all hooked to this bit of extra support here. Well, mainly because it hasn't flowered down, this country hasn't flowered for a fair while. So I figured they would have used up a fair few of their resources. I'm amazed that they're actually here at all. Most of the bees in this area of Lumen died because of the fact that the farmers have gone away from stock and there's hardly any sheep troughs left. So a lot of them all died out because they didn't have anything to drink. These gals are obviously stayers. Or they had some secret supply of water. Maybe we could call them camel bees. <laughs> I'm just going to go and find something to actually sit that honeycomb on. Oh! Just hold that thought, all right? Nobody run away. They're not real angry. I mean, they, I didn't think they would be because, I mean, the gentleman's been able to work reasonably close to them with his renovation, so they haven't attacked him, so they figured they mustn't be too crazy. You never really know until you start playing with them, do you? Right, let's just put the honeycomb on that sheet, shall we? That'll work. Don't shake your gals onto the dirt if you can avoid it, because Obviously they're designed to fly, not crawl around in the dirt. So I like to shake them into here if they're, so they can, um, obviously the field bees will fly away, the nurse bees will stay here and they won't have to run around in the dirt. Right, there's nothing really in this anyway. Generally speaking, it'll be field bees working up where the honey is anyway, because they've just come back to ripen it up. The real excitement's gonna be as we get down here a bit further. I think this looks like where they've moved to is a bit further under here where it's a bit more protected. Yes, of course, it'll just depend how jolly well the old fuel tank decides to oh, fall apart. Oh, blooming, blooming. This is back in the days when they actually used to make shit not to fall apart. <laughs> this is pre-plastic. <laughs> Thinking that looks like it's another part of the entry hole there. I'm pretty sure they didn't think this was what you were going to use your hive tool for. <laughs> I did actually bring an angle grinder, but it looks like it's its typical of these sort of things. It's just given me enough hope that I'm going to be able to open it without cutting it with an angle grinder. Might just be a bit more resistance than you hope. But that looks pretty, that looks pretty hopeful. And then I don't know, is there a middle bar? Is there a middle support? There's a middle bar just there. They're not pleased to see us, but the owners have got to get this car moved so they can't stay in the car boot, otherwise they're going to end up in a scrapyard, so... Yeah, just lucky that we're here. Just wondering whether we actually try to just lift the lid back and then we can see what we're working with. Because I don't think they're actually hooked too much to the lid. So I reckon we might just pull the lid out the way because it's pretty sad. <laughs> Almost be able to look straight down in there then. Right. So if we're going to peel that up, we should be right, shouldn't we? Maybe not. Ah, oh, it's just another hook. And of course it's hooked this side too, just so it won't let go. Don't think it's professionally designed. It's not actually being meant to be pulled apart, I don't think. So the comb's actually let go, it's just hooked. It's part of the infrastructure, the actual tub. Oh, come on. That'll be fun to go and get the grinder for one little tiny bit. We've got the honey stored here and around there, a little bit there. So I'm tipping the brood boxes around here. The brood nest, I should say. It's not a brood box. <laughs> Guy. So I think if we just start taking some of this comb out of here, so we can actually see where our brood is, then we can put some brood on a couple of frames and we can let the bees run into that box over there. They're all mounting up here on the wall of the fuel tank. And I'd like to get them out of this sun because, of course, they don't really like being in the, in the daylight. It's not their preferred idea. This little piece here, once we let the ladies run away from it a bit. 
They definitely haven't wasted any space as usual. Are you going to come up or are you not? There we go. So this is all just the edge, just the edge comb, a little bit of honey and old brood frame. I reckon the brood's about here somewhere by the look of them. Yep, looks like we're just starting the brood nest, which is cool, which is what we're looking for. For a change of pace, we're going to put them on the frames as we find them, since it's a bit blooming crazy out here in the sun. We'll just take it as a whole slice and we'll see what happens. The queen will have already run away from us doing this to her, so... But you still want to keep an eye out for her, just in case. Because you know what? Sometimes she'll surprise you and just hang around. And there's all the nice young larvae coming up. And you see all the nice young larvae they're laying up, so they must be finding something to eat. I'll just cut this honey off. As I've said before, put too much honey in the box. All you really do is drown everybody, so you don't want that honey. They can get some more. I'll get some more honey later on. So don't forget, of course, when you put it in your box, you want to put the top to the top where the top was. So you put, say, this bit here, when you lift it up, you're laying it down there. Generally, the reason why I talk about the honey being removed is because it's generally across the top of where the brood is, and it runs down over top of everybody and makes a heck of a mess. So better off to let them reconstitute the honey themselves later on. And there's no other bees out here anyway, so we'll probably just leave these this here in, a, in the back of the... Well, I don't know. We'll leave it in a pot here somewhere and the girls can reconstitute it without getting stuck in it. Of course, if you're in an environment where there's lots of other bees around, just contain the honey and let feed it back to them that way. Otherwise, you might get upset neighbours. And here's our fancy rubber band idea so we can hold the, the old original comb to our new frames to make ourselves a productive beehive. That's the general plan. And so that looks like nice, healthy white larvae, which is good. And the fact that she's laying is a good sign. That means there must be something out here for them to eat. And the next one we get along, we'll shake a few more nurse bees in there for that frame. And we should be good. Oh, this is a nice big brood bit. Mm. Wow. That was almost a perfect design cutout. Just fits in there awesomely. Perfect, look at that. This bit in here's already fallen over all by itself. Of course, don't forget, you're gonna be checking that there's no brood diseases when you're doing all this excitement. You don't wanna see it, but, ah, no. Shit, don't. It fell through the gap. <laughs> ah. <laughs> don't forget to check for your brood diseases. You don't want to see any diseases, but you might as well see them while you're getting to this point rather than going to all the trouble because if they've got a foul brood, well, you seriously do not want to put them in with your good hives for a start. And, it, you know, ultimately they're doomed anyway. All you're going to do then is pretty much just infect your bee box. As a matter of fact, I haven't found anything bad and I haven't even seen any jolly um, chalk brood, which is pretty common in a cutout. Maybe it's too jolly hot. <laughs> I don't know. Too jolly hot for them. Fair bit of yellow pollen happening. Oops, the next one fell over. That's not completely ideal. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. It's just the perfect tank. <laughs> Almost look like they belong. We might have to start making swarm boxes out of old fuel tanks. Right, now, it's got entertainment written all over it because now it's gone around the corner and the girls are around the edge. I'm guessing there's still more stuff there. It looks like there would be. I don't know, we might have to go and get the cutting bit yet. It's not much, it's just that little tiny bit there, which is obviously the reinforced part. Well, we haven't found the boss lady yet. So, I don't know, we've got to get this jolly lip up here I guess they've got a fair bit of young eggs anyway if they have to raise a new queen, but it's not ideal. We don't want to lose her. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to cut that through here so we can lift this up and get some proper access. And then I'm thinking I'm going to sit the bee box on the other side and then hopefully the ladies will run up out of this tank and into the box that we're providing for them as well. Because I noticed them all running up here onto the comb and maybe she'll just run up and do the job for us. But who knows? If not, I've got the queen cage in my pocket. Anyway, I think I'm going to have to go and get the angle grinder because that's just solid as. 
So, I shall return. Okay, ladies, I'm sorry. Don't hate me too much. I can possibly get this up, because she's probably sitting up here. Of course, that's not gonna fucking break off, is it? So what I think I might do, I'm gonna sit the bee box over there and keep working where I am, and then the ladies, when they get organized, they can run into the box. Maybe, but we'll see. <laughs> I've seen it happen before. That's usually when you lot aren't here watching me. All the best laid fun happens then. And there's still a bit more brood there. Ah, uh -huh. that's why it wouldn't come out, because there's the solid middle baffle. Fuel tank's got a middle baffle just to annoy me. That actually makes a pretty cool hive when you think about it, doesn't it? Because it's got uh, like that protected wall, had plenty of access. Yeah, I don't know. wonder if we could have that. What do you reckon? What would we call that? The fuel tank hive. It's still going on a little bit more. Oh, don't. Yep, that's very honey heavy. They're definitely breeding up here anyway. Not that they've got a whole lot of honey, but they've obviously if they're making a lot of brood and a lot of young, or they'll be eating the honey they're bringing in anyway. They've got a lot more brood than I expected because I've nearly run out of rubber bands in my pocket. There's only two or three more little bits to go and we'll be all good. Oh, dum -da -dum -da -da. That's all of the brood, I reckon. We're down to the, now we're just on the honeycomb, or not really even honeycomb, just old, old honeycomb with no honey in it. There's that little bit there that we want to cut off so we can get rid of that tin. I'd be tipping that she's actually hiding over there somewhere at the minute. Being that we haven't caught her, you want to be really careful that you don't get carried away and lose her if you don't have to. I'm trying to get the girls to walk out of this messy drum because if we tip all that crap in there, then they've got to clean it all out. So we're trying to avoid that as well. Nice bit of pollen, isn't it? I'm just gonna get the grinder and zip this little bit of tin off. I think I'm gonna rinse my hands first before I get my grinder all covered in honey. You can see all the field bees, which are normally the ones that attack you, are all collecting back to where they think your home is. And so they're all there busily defending where we're not. So that's not such a bad idea. <laughs> I don't think that was going to let go, that was still pretty solid. There's a whole lot of bees hidden underneath here now. So I'm just going to lift that out, shake that on the top. If it was a little bit easier piece of stuff to handle, you could have a bit of a look around for the queen, but it's rather complicated and awkward at the minute, so I'm just going to give her a shake and see what happens. As you can see there, quite a lot of bees hidden here. Just going to let them do their thing. And there's so much crap. I don't want to get all that shit in my box if I can avoid it. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do, since I've got all this crap stuck in here, and I've already got a bit of sediment, we don't want any more crap in your box than you can avoid. So I'm going to get the man of the moment to hand me them a smoker, and I'm just going to chase them off of this bit of stuff. Hmm. If I can get them off the outside, then I might be able to just peel it open a bit. And we can keep that shit on the top. They're very tidy little creatures, bees, and they don't like their boxes full of crap. Of course, when it's in there, they've spent a fair bit of time tidying things up already, I would have thought. And of course, being that we don't know where the queen is, we have to be extra careful, because the last thing you want to do after all this trouble, finding a healthy hive and it's all good, is bloom and kill the queen. That is totally non-productive, but I mean, they have hope because they've got some nice young stuff here that they could do something with, but if you don't do your queen of damage, it's a much more productive exercise. It's got a fair few of them off of that wall. So what we're going to do is just want to peel it open here. See all this crap in here? I don't want in my box. That's what I'm trying to avoid. And I don't know where Her Majesty is. And they're not singing a good song just yet, so she might be anywhere. <whistles> At least that'll get the nurse bees in there to look after their babies. That'll be a good start. Just make sure there's nobody important in here so we can tip this bit of crap out the way and we can shake the rest of the girls in very good just keep your eye open you never know you might catch the boss she doesn't want you to see her in the nature of course the bees don't 
the bees don't realise that we're actually here to help them, they're just here to survive. So they have no clue that us humans have turned up to try and save them from being blue and destroyed. They're just trying to save themselves. And their natural response to any threat, of course, is for the queen to hide and she'll be, I don't know where she is at the minute, but I haven't heard them, like I said, I haven't heard their song change, so I don't think she's quite in the box yet, but I reckon she's still in here. So my next plan is I'm gonna smoke them around and smoke them up the wall of this box. Then they can run in here and then we'll just listen. And I've come around this side, there's still one row of honeycomb in here, so she still might be down here yet. One other thing that I find really fascinating with bees is when you do this in the cutout and you leave their wax like out and it's a, if it, well, it's not quite as hot today, but you end up with their wax sitting out in the sun, it'll actually start rendering down and falling apart. So they must have a really clever way of keeping their hive at the right temperature. And of course, if you know anything about beekeeping, the way they keep their temperature is by bringing water in and fanning it through their hive. And they're like basically an evaporative air conditioner. Oh, I don't know, but I suppose it's a bit like the kings of old with those lovely ladies and their big fans waving on there to keep them cool. So they're pretty bloody clever. Yeah. yeah. Where are you, boss woman? I don't think she's on here, but she just might be, because it's just the place she would be hiding. You know, they're running out of places to be. Ah, oh, places to be. Don't be silly. <laughs> Goodness me. I couldn't see her there anywhere, so. Sounds like they're starting to hum a bit, but that could just be because they're finding a bit more brood frames. Because of course they get a bit excited when they lose all their children. See how their little bridges are getting made here where they're all hooked together? How cool is that with their little legs all hooked together? Now when they actually form, you see them when they actually make a swarm, that's how they all hold together. They'll come in and they'll, some of the girls will grab hold of the branch that they want to hang as a swarm and then one will put their leg down and then another one will grab hold of that leg and then they'll all grab hold of each other and they're all just there bloody basically one bee hanging by one leg well thousands of bees hanging by a leg but depending on how many bees there is and that's all that's holding them together until they get some wax organised I mean how bloody clever is that? And when they're making the wax in, the, in their homes, see them on the frame all bunched together in a nice little neat thing, row. And you can see that you'll actually watch the honeycomb if you don't have a foundation frame in there. It'll form in a nice little round circle because that's how the girls are hanging and they're just making the honeycomb and it just spreads out. Until eventually, what have they got? They've got a honeycomb house. See how bloody clever are these creatures, honestly? So I'm just going to lift the old petrol tank up and just shake the girls that are on the tank onto the onto the top of the box and hopefully hopefully we can go a bit out of the sun because it's starting to get jolly hot here when I lift it up can you all just tell me if there's anything actually underneath the tin because I don't want to when I tap it I don't want any bees to be underneath there so just have a look when I lift it up look underneath for me now you're all gonna have to yell loud because I'm a long way away okay I want to hear no Loudly if there's nothing there, and yes, loudly if there is something there, okay? Here we go. No. No. Cool. <laughs> that looks about right, doesn't it? Where's that bit of tin there? <laughs> right. We still don't know where the boss is, but being that it's crazy hot, I think I'm going to sit the lid on, but we're not going to put it all the way on. Because the girls are all on the side here out the sun at the minute. That might give them a little bit more shelter. Because believe it or not, bees do not actually like being in the sun. It's not their forte. Even though they're out flying around normally, and, but when they're in their home, they like to be in the safe environment where it's all nice and cosy. And all the babies are sitting around. Actually, the babies are sitting around feeding everybody else, which is rather weird. But anyway, <laughs> that's a whole nother dilemma. Well, you never know, you see, it pays to double check. I reckon the ladies are supersedering at the minute because I found myself a little queen cell on the edge of all of this stuff. Never suppose that you know any, everything about what's going on. Anyway, I'm not 100% sure, but I reckon they've only got, I've only found the one cell. So I don't think it's a swarm cell, but I'm going to put it in the box just in case I've gone to all this trouble. There's been some tornado in a white bee suit that ripped the roof off. We'll give them a fighting chance. I don't know whether it is or not, but it looks like a queen cell to me. Oh, now, yeah. they're probably not going to be happy to see me now, but anyway, where are we, everybody? Are we all on the roof? No, cool. 
Uh, I'm just going to find one of the frames that they have in here with the brood on it. I'm going to use this little bit of wax and we're going to push it on the bottom of the frames that are in here in a minute. Hang her down because the queen cells are always hanging down. And then we'll come back and there'll probably be a swarm in a tree or they might be superseduing. Maybe that's why we didn't find the queen. Oh, what do we got here? That one will do. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a gap. So you see how we got that corner there? So we're just going to tweeze this a little bit, make ourselves a bit of a spot so we can get that a bit suppled up. And we just get our queen cell. And basically, don't crush the bloody cell. This bit here, don't crush that. Just use the tail. All right, if you can possibly be sensible, that would be good. And then just push it in so that when you close everything up, you're not going to knock it off. Well, they're not, it's not going to get knocked off. Yeah, like that. Looks good. Pop it back in here. That'll basically, that's basically finished anyway. So she's going to hatch in the next day or two. Then, of course, she's got to go through all the excitement of a mating flight and all the rest of the carry-on. And if she doesn't make it back from the mating flight, then you might consider this was, like, your fault that it didn't happen. But, you see, you're never 100% sure what's going on in a bee box until you start looking at it, especially when it's in a blooming petrol tank. Not necessarily under normal circumstances. Anyway, I thought that was... I think that might be a good find. Well, I reckon that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to slide the lid across. We've got a few girls hanging out the front and a few girls hanging out the back. I think the important people are inside the box. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, we've got these little old clips here. So we're going to hold the lid down. I just want to move the box back in the shade, in the boot, so all the field bees will come back and find out where their new home is. And then, I don't know, in about a week or so, I'll come back and have another check. Because the gentleman wants to send the car to the dump because it's kind of in his blooming building zone and it's not really helpful. So that's what we're doing here. Plus it's going to be a good site for our mating I reckon that's my plan I think this might be a really good spot out here in the Mallee that we can mate our queens in and there's not that many other bees and well hence there is these bees a bloke just might happen to pop the bloodline in this particular box that he wants so let's see if we can lift it into the back we're going to go and sit in the air conditioning for a minute and let it reorientate and see what happens now right. yeah, of course I've got it back to front haven't I because they were the other way <laughs> shit <laughs> ow <laughs> wow that's got some angry bees. look at that. See now that's the point of putting it somewhere over there where the field bees are, because we're getting quite buzzed now that they're coming after us. Yeah. I think we might put our gloves on and we'll get the cameraman to put the camera on a tripod. I might get him to help me lift it in here because I'm not that clever. Just before we run off, we're just gonna have a quick scout around what we've got over there just to triple check that we haven't got any queen laying about anywhere because that's crap but I think she's in the box so but it's just always good to double triple check mm -hmm. 